You're listening to the Mind Manual Podcast, Episode 17, The Suffering and Misery We Create for Ourselves. Well, hello again. Today's session comes to you inspired from someone that I've recently had a bit to do with that has been creating a lot of misery for herself. So I want to explore how the beliefs and expectations that we hold on to so dearly can be the source of so much of the suffering and misery that we create for ourselves. We all have them, but what I want to show you is that it may be worth your while to have a much closer look at them so that you can see how they're causing you so much pain and suffering in the form of resistance, disappointment, anger, frustration, loneliness, sadness, and any other feeling that you no longer wish to be inundated with. It's at this point you might want to jump into defence mode and attribute these emotional states to what is actually happening to you from out there, from all the people, in what they say, how they say it, what they do or don't do, from your job, from your children, parents, friends, your boss, the weather, the town you live in, even the country, you name it, everything else that is happening outside of ourselves, we think is responsible for how we feel. But what I want to show you is that it's our resistance to these events in how we think they should be or not be that is actually the cause of most of the misery we find ourselves stewing in. And you might be well justified in thinking these beliefs and expectations are what you know to be fair or right and true for you. But have you ever stopped to question how they make you feel? Because unless you can line up the world and teach all the people how to behave, what to say, the tone they should use, or even the timing of when they should say it, you're never going to feel good while ever you're holding on to the expectations and beliefs that they all fall short of. We can't control any of it. And if you try, it will just exhaust you. I mean, have your attempts to control all the things, have they worked? And for how long? When we set up our model of the world in this way, we will always be setting ourselves up for misery and placing ourselves at the effect of everything that's outside of our control. So whatever conditions or rules that you've created in your own mind, for whatever reason, whether they came from your childhood conditioning, from your culture or significant other, whatever the influence has been, it's really all just baggage that we carry around with us when you consider how they make us feel and compare that to how we really want to feel despite what's going on out there and what all the humans are doing or not doing. If you were to take into account the amount of time you spend in each of these painful states as you move through your day, your week, which then becomes your life, and you arrived at the realisation that this experience you're creating for yourself, which is really just a combination of our thoughts and feelings, would you want to start choosing your thoughts and beliefs more deliberately in order to produce a different result? Or would you just want to argue for them and justify why you should be holding on to them so that you can continue to feel bad whenever the world starts to violate them. We need to start seeing what these thoughts and beliefs are costing us. They're costing you your relationships, your health, and robbing you of so much happiness. When we argue for these limitations by defiantly claiming them as our right, our duty, or just basic respect and human decency that we we're looking up to uphold, whatever justification we want to use in holding on to them, and we don't ever really contemplate to what end it's all been for, whether they're actually serving us or not in our life or how they're making us feel, 
then we just stay trapped in the misery we create for ourselves and the illusion that it's all happening to us instead of something that we are creating. Now, you might think it's serving you in the form of upholding standards or for the sake of fairness and equity, but is it really? Are you really teaching all the people how to do it right and are they following your directives? That might happen in the life of happily ever after, but I don't think that's the life we have here on earth. That's not what we've been born into. Why do I think this? Because it never has been a happily ever after place. It's a mess out there. It always has been. That's very clear for as long as you would like to look back in history. I think we're here to have the full range of emotions and experiences that this life has to offer, which includes all of it, the good with the bad, the easy and the hard. So when we insist that it should be this way or that and exclude all possibilities for it to be any different than how we think it should be and it comes at the expense of making you miserable, then I think we seriously have to question it and ask ourselves, is this what I really want for my life? Is this how I want to feel as I move through life? The worst thing about all of this is that we go and give all our power away by blaming everyone and everything for making us feel this way, which only leaves us feeling disconnected and disappointed and everything else that comes from the resistance we have around it. So we live our life feeling trapped and powerless in our own misery because the rest of the world won't comply. But what if we were to drop our beliefs in what we think others should value or how they should behave or show up? And what if you were to drop your expectations about what they should be doing, how they should be doing it and when they should be doing it? Yes, it's all very plausible to say that we need rules to live by and things should be fair and equal, and to some extent that's true. Our children need boundaries and work needs to get done. But all that can be managed very differently in a way that doesn't leave us feeling at the effect of everything else. When we can truly understand that no person, event or circumstance can ever cause us to feel a certain way, then we cease being at the mercy of anything that is happening outside of ourselves. In reality, it's only ever our thoughts and the stories we wrap around something and what we go and make any of that mean that can actually induce an emotion that we feel. Neuroscience has shown us this. Our thoughts create our feelings. So if we were to change the rules of our own game that we've made up and let go of the beliefs and expectations along with all the stories we spin into them that has us believing in it all even harder because we're continually reinforcing them and bringing them to life in our mind and imagination, then we also get to drop the part of having to experience the emotions that they induce, which we don't really enjoy or want to feel. And so ultimately we get to change the course of our whole experience, which is ultimately how we create our reality. This can only happen if you choose to prioritise the way you want to feel above the protection of your ego. In order for us to feel safe in this world, the primal part of our brain wants to rely on certainty and a defined structure for how the rules in this game of life should be played out. From this position, it's much easier to navigate our life in judging something as good or bad, right or wrong, and whether it's safe or not. It helps to give us a baseline where we have on one side what's acceptable to us and on the other side what we should reject. This primitive part of our brain, which is mainly concerned with survival, we'll use this framework to try and keep us safe. 
and it does so on autopilot to conserve energy, which is another element associated with survival. It's on autopilot because these beliefs are usually deeply embedded into our identity and psyche through habitually thinking about them over and over again. They become so familiar to us over a lifetime that we don't even see them as beliefs anymore. We start to see them as just facts, as if this is the way life's supposed to be and we don't even have a choice in it. But what I want you to see is how we are creating all of it with our thoughts and beliefs. Have you ever been around a person who can only see the bad in a situation? A situation where you can see a thousand other possibilities that you could also choose and believe, and yet they're locked into just seeing the doom and gloom of it all because it falls to one side of their baseline in their beliefs and therefore they reject it and get stuck in the resistance of it all, held within their own limitations. It leads to a contracting mindset, blinding them to all the other possibilities that could also exist. You change the thought or belief, which is just an ingrained way of thinking, and you change the baseline. The line is then drawn in a very different place and you open up to seeing it all from a very different angle. And you orientate yourself more to what you can come into acceptance of rather than what you've been too busy rejecting. And you also open up to more of the things that you're grateful for as opposed to being disappointed in everything that you don't have or that isn't right. What we focus on with our thoughts becomes the focal point of our reality. And this experience intensifies with the accompanying feelings that those thoughts induce. We can choose to live in a contracting mindset or an expanding mindset. We can choose a different baseline belief or perspective to have about any situation or circumstance. Or we can hold rigid to the belief that has been so well ingrained and argue for these limitations and all the misery that goes with it. We guard and protect those beliefs. And we often do as if our lives depend on it because they're often so deeply embedded that they form part of our identity. And if we were to let them go on a subconscious level, it would be comparable to a death. And given survival is paramount, this will be a very difficult process to engage in for many who are trapped by the illusion that we are our ego. When we identify the essence of who we are with our self-esteem or sense of self-importance, we can't move beyond those constructs to free ourselves. And so we continue to fight for them despite the suffering and misery they cause us. In order to become more conscious of this whole process, we need to keep reminding ourselves in the moment that we are the ones creating this suffering, not the other people or events. It is our thoughts that have induced the emotions that we're not really wanting to feel. We are the ones who have lined it all up that way. They are our rules, our perspective, our thoughts and our beliefs that are creating the way we feel, which is then fueling how we keep showing up and then what we do which ultimately produces the results we have in our life. The big question we need to ask then is, am I happy with these results? The good news is, if you're not, it is totally within your power to change them. And if you'd like to learn more about how, you can jump over to themindmanual.com to find out more. <music> 